Hey guys, welcome to Josh's Weight Loss Diary. And today we're going to be covering one of the best pizzas that I have made and came across. And it's all thanks to this man right here, Chris from Chris Cooking Nashville. So the first thing I need you guys to do is if you have not, I mean, anybody in the carnival world should know Chris Cooking Nashville. I'm just saying, all right. Uh, the man is a genius when it comes to carnivore cooking. Now, not to take away from some other carnivore chefs out there. I'm just saying this man here, you definitely want to make sure you're also subscribed to him. So I'm going to wait. You go over there and subscribe to him. If you're not, I'll wait. Okay. So now that you've subscribed to him, I appreciate that. So you probably want to know all about it. So first of all, I'm going to tell you, uh, okay. So how do you make it right? Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about it, but how do you make it? The first thing you have to do is follow his recipe. I'm not going to show you step-by-step -step how to make the, um, up to a certain point. Okay. Because it's not fair to him. He put the hard work. Chris put the hard work into creating this uh, this amazing thing. And I've got the link below and what it was, was he created like a, an amazing white bread recipe. Okay. And me and my roommate who are both doing the carnivore diet, I am over seven months in my roommates over a month in, we both lo lost a total of almost a hundred pounds between us. Um, <clears throat> but we both like our eyes lit up like pizza. <laughs> so it was like, Hey, if we could actually have a, cause you know, as you guys may or may not know from some of my other diary videos, I've done carnivore pizzas and I've tried like the pork crust, the chicken crust. I've tried, I do the cheese one normally, like the cheese and egg one where you do Colby and, and mozzarella and a couple eggs and you mix them up and you put them out. That's to me overall been the, the sort of best version, but it gets very rich in cheese flavor. Um, so I've adapted Chris's bread recipe. Now I will admit it's not perfect. And I hope Chris watches this video. Uh, I, um, because I want him to improve on this. I want him to say, yeah, Josh, this is what I was already thinking or whatever. I don't care, but I want you to improve on it. Um, but what I did, you guys will probably at least want, if you're, if you're, if you're craving that, this is going to be as close to a regular piece as you can. Now I made the keto version. I'm just, I'm letting you guys know I'm, I'm very mostly strict carnivore, but every once in a while I dip my toe into keto for pizza for my, my, my pizza, like once a month kind of pizza day, I dip my toe into car uh, into keto. Now you don't have to do the sauce or you can do your own carnivore sauce, whatever you want to do. Okay. So <clears throat> how does it work? First step is you make his dough. Okay. And you're going to get it right to the point. Instead of pouring it into a, a, a loaf pan, you're going to pour it into a roaster pan slash. It's going to be the size of a cookie sheet. So if you, there's, there's these deep like roaster pans that are the size of a cookie sheet, but they're a little deeper and they're like a roaster pan. That's what I want you guys to get. That's what I got from Walmart. If you don't have one, I got mine from Walmart. So you want to grease it up with beef tallow. All right. Take your paintbrush. Just like he greased his loaf. You're going to grease the edges and the bottom and put a nice painted layer of grease. And then you're going to pour his mixture. Once you make it nice and airy and you fold everything in, you're going to pour that into the big square pan and you're going to smooth it out. Now, is it going to be 100% smooth? No, you're going to have some ridges in it, whatever, but you're going to get it as evenly coated as you can. Once you get it in the oven, it will settle down a little bit and it will smooth out like you've seen in the picture. Now, I, as far as baking times, uh, I did the temperature he recommended 325. Now, for the loaf, he said 45 minutes. For this, because it was spread out thinner, I actually did uh, 25 minutes. 
And as you see here, if you look in here, this came out where it had a nice crust on the bottom, like browned crust, and there was some slight browning starting to happen on the top. Now, I did the next step of his video, which was to turn off the oven, crack the oven door, and let it cool down for about 45 minutes on its own. Like, you let it naturally, like, now, remember, the video you just saw where I picked it up and all that, this is after the cool down. So, again, after the 25 minutes, you can just turn the oven off, open the door, like, crack the door open, and let it cool down and set your timer for 45 minutes. And then you can pull it out. And then I also let it set. Now, for me, it was pretty much room temperature when I pulled it out after 45 minutes. But if you feel like you want to make sure it's completely cooled down, you can let it set out and let it cool down a little bit. Now, once it's completely cooled down, I made sure to fire up my oven 500 degrees. That's the hottest my oven will go. Now, you could do 450 or something if you wanted, but I did uh, for uh, 500. Once my oven was preheated, then I decorated my pizza. I didn't decorate it early. I used a pizza sauce that I made. It's a, it's a fairly clean sauce. I'll explain briefly what it is. It is a large, the large can of diced tomatoes. And I put them in the food processor. I drained a little bit of moisture out of them. I did. I, I drained them when I opened the can. They're, they're canned. I drained a little bit of that moisture, excess water off the top, but I put them in the food processor. I did about a tablespoon of garlic, a teaspoon of basil, and a teaspoon of oregano, and I did a tablespoon of ghee. Yeah, that's right, ghee. You heard me. Uh, and I put it in the food processor. Oh, and salt. And I, I want to say salt. You want to salt the taste and pepper. If you, if you, and, and again, remember. Guys, carnivore keto, you can omit, change, substitute. I'm telling you how I did it. So blended all that up and uh, set that. And I actually did it the night before because I knew that pizza sauce just tastes even better the next day, <laughs> right? So, but if you don't, you don't have to. All right, anyways, once I had the, the crust in the pan completely cooled down, I decorate it. Now I'm going to give you a tip. A lot of times you'll, you'll leave the edges of the crust. Um, in this case, you can do sauce, sauce right up to almost the edge of the pan. Okay. And you want to put it down not too thin, not too thick. Just a good layer of sauce. Spread it out. It took most of my sauce. I had leftover sauce, but not a lot. And then, of course, I did mozzarella, did pepperoni. And this was the experiment. You can add, like, ground beef, bacon, however you want to do your pizza, guys. I'm just telling you how I did it. I stuck it in the oven, did the timer for seven minutes. Everything got nice and melty and warmed up. And then I hit the broiler for about another three to four minutes, and I monitored it. And I pulled it out. And as you can see, amazing looking. I mean, it came out picture perfect looking. Okay. Now, as far as eating it wise, texture wise, texture wise, it came out or flavor wise. Let's, let's start with flavor flavor wise. It tastes just about like a real pizza, like, but texture and taste. This is what it remind, re reminded me of. It reminded me of like when you have leftover pizza and you warm it up the next day and the crust, it's like, it's spongy but it's not as chewy as it was the day before, right? So flavor-wise, we tasted like a true, amazing, the garlic came through, the a little bit of the oregano and basil, and, of course, the, the tomatoes. Everything came through uh, perfectly. So flavor-wise, tasted amazing, guys. This is about as close to me as a legitimate pizza as you can get. But obviously, super, super low in carbs, um, just, just with the tomatoes, right, and stuff. Um, but it, it's just amazing, guys, I'm telling you. I did modify only one little thing in Chris's um, recipe, which was, I think I did like a heaping teaspoon of yeast. <laughs> so, um, but with that being said, 
uh, no matter what, if you follow his to the T, I mean, it's going to be amazing. Like I'm telling you, it, it's, it's, it's going to be amazing flavor wise. Now, texture wise, it could improve. This is what I talked about. It could improve texture wise. I hope Chris sees this video and says challenge accepted because I'm not challenging him, but I, I want him to do a chewier and then he knows tech cooking techniques and all that stuff. So I'm sure he could make it chewier, but still have that spongy, almost white bread text or taste and stuff like crust type taste. Anyways, I had to share this with you guys again. And here's, here's the video of the, the pizza itself. And, 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 and as you can see, I'm kind of showing you the sponginess uh, of that crust and you can hold it like a pizza. It's, it tastes like a pizza. It just needs that little more chew. And I'm telling you guys, it will be the perfect keto slash carnivore pizza, depending how you want to top it. For me, I'm happy to do keto when it comes to pizza. And this is about the healthiest that you can get on a pizza. So super excited, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Consider subscribing to me if you haven't. I appreciate it. At least hit that like for me. That really helps out. And I'm telling you guys, this makes these type of, of, of things and lifestyle so much fun is to do these things. But guys, and again, thank you, Chris from Chris cooking Nashville guys. I hope you all try this and you all thank Chris as well, but thank you guys so, so much. And we will see you in the next video guys. Bye.